This but actually, conference I had, will now be recorded. I had some important uh, engagements, and yesterday there was some, what do you say, uh, misplanning that happened, so we couldn't have the session yesterday. No. Then before that, for two days, I uh, was just engaged in some other uh, things. But then, yeah, we are back now. So, yeah. take it from where we left. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, how did the assignments go? Uh, yeah, almost. Uh, I have I have completed uh, two three assignments. This last one has been not completed, but yeah. Okay, uh, not completed as in you tried and you didn't get that, or you did not. Yeah, get the I have tried. I have tried, but I did not get that last one. But okay, and what about you, Preet? Yeah, so me, me and Dhruvesh, basically, we, uh, you know, we got our heads together. So we worked on a couple of things, you know. So I got his contact details, and we were just talking about uh, a few requirements and stuff. Uh, the the last one, I've I've done something with it, uh, but I'm not sure if that's the, uh, that's how it should be done. Uh, you know, I've I've tried something, but it's a bit outside the box, you see. So we'll just have to see. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, based on everything that you've said, it's all completed with a little help from Duresh as well, to be honest. <laughs> okay, great. So you guys have been uh, getting it together and uh, you know, getting yeah, 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 yeah. Just working on a few things together, yeah. So uh, you know, just uh, needed a few tips, and you know, because obviously Duresh works in the industry anyway. You see, so uh, he has a bit of experience of. Uh, uh, I don't know maybe Salesforce or other platforms which are similar. So I, I think he understands some of the concepts quite well. Uh, and yeah, so uh, anywhere uh, I felt lost, uh, you know, he was there to help me out. Okay, great, great. You guys are making a good team. Yeah, yeah. For now, yeah, we're making a good team. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And what about Vishal? Was Vishal also there with you guys? He wasn't, uh, you know, he said that he was going to get in touch with me on LinkedIn, but he never did. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I've not heard from him. Okay, cool. So, yeah, so maybe we can just discuss that. And then I wanted to cover that uh, one important topic that we were left with. Uh, that was the plugin for search filters, which we remember, which we, you know, if you guys remember, that was the last topic that we discussed like what we wanted to start with okay right uh, i told you guys right where well, the search filter does not allow you or clauses so we need to do some bit of code over there correct correct yeah yeah, yeah. so that is something we can try it out today yeah okay just uh, quickly sajiv how many how many sessions do we have left altogether i'm just trying to plan because i want to try and uh, take my cpq exam as soon as I can you know obviously I'll have to do some practice so I've got to give a few days after we finish the course for that practice you see so I just want to work out uh, accordingly uh, so if uh, you know how many sessions do you think we have left in in, in the course itself yes so uh, actually I'm planning to you know uh, have longer sessions starting from today right right so considering that I'm seeing it as by next week like this whole week and uh, some session in the next week we should be able to finish this up sure and will we get something to help us prepare for the actual exam uh, you know is there any material that we can maybe look up or uh, you know just to uh, understand concepts a bit better i think you know because uh, exams are scenario based right and obviously i haven't had any experience of working on any projects yet uh, and without that, I'm going to be able to enter the industry. So, you know, so it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation for me. Right, right. So I, you know, as per as my plan, uh, by, uh, you know, end of five more sessions, we should be able to finish this off and then I can send you out those materials. Right. And then you can start working on those materials. Like those are all uh, study guides as well as you know some kind of exercises that you guys can try out sure sure and sajil uh, i think we have covered product bundle and right now product rule right so there are remaining pro uh, i think pricing re is remaining and what is now you are teaching right now that coding 
And correct. what else so, is remaining? Correct, correct. So we finished off with uh, products. Okay, we finished off with how products work. We fin we saw how product bundles work. Mm -hmm. That we saw by dynamic bundle. Then we saw product rules. We are almost about to finish with product rules. We also saw search filters, the basic search filters. And now I'm going to show you advanced search filters. Okay. And what about Variable. pricing and summary variables, Sajil? Correct. So the next thing that we have uh, now we have is we have price rules. Okay. We have summary variables and we have discount schedules. Yeah. Okay. So these are the three things that uh, we have. So these things we'll be able to finish off in uh, two sessions. And then there are smaller topics that I would need one session. And in the last session would be like a complete uh, quick overview and uh, what is a discussion kind of all the topics that we have covered. Yeah, yeah. But Sajil, just don't be, uh, um, what we can say, don't be in a hurry to complete it. Eh? Yeah, Take yeah, two yeah, weeks to complete it. it. Yeah. Okay, Sajil? Of course, of course, we, we are going as per the plan. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. We are going as per the plan. We are not uh, rushing with anything because the most important topics that is bundles, hmm. product rules, and filters. This is what we have spent enough time on. Yeah. We have actually. Uh, you know, uh, gone through even the minor details of these things. So even if when you're studying for your exams, you will come to know that there is nothing that we have left out in these topics. Like each and every scenario, each and every edge cases we have covered in our session itself. And when it comes to price rules uh, and you know these summary variable and discount schedules are very small topics. These two are like uh, it's, it's just an extra feature that is available there is nothing uh, much you know twist and turn in, in it when it comes to uh, discount schedules and summary variables nice rules there are some things that you can play around with so that we will take it up you know we'll give some time on that but then this discount schedules and summary variables are very small topics so that's the, how the plan is so yeah we are towards the end of it but then yeah there are still few things that we need to complete okay cool Okay, so maybe uh, since you and uh, Preet has done this together, one of you guys can show me. Like maybe Preet can show me uh, the assignments, and then maybe yeah, we yeah. can just start with the advanced search builder. Sure. So if I can, yeah, have the link, please, to share the uh, screen. Navya, can you give Preet the access to share? Sajil, to whom I have to give access? Preet, Preet. Preet. Sajil, I have given permission to you, na, so you can directly give him the present access. Check the attendees, And Sajil, uh, about the code templates, it's also including in uh, our syllabus. Yeah, so code template, we, do, we don't have uh, it in advance. We'll only have a basic part of yeah. code templates because uh, that is a very vast topic. Okay. So that is covered in the advanced training. So in, in this particular training, we would uh, we would just see it like a basic part of it, like how, how exactly it works. So one of the ones I'm not sure of, let me show you, you that quickly first of all. Uh, I mean, it works, you know, what what you asked uh, for, you know, is working. So, you know, I'm not sure if this is allowed though, you know, if this is how it's meant to be. Uh, so I'll quickly show that to you. Okay. Because my understanding is there's no correct way, you know, if you can achieve your, uh, you know, like uh, your requirement or, you know, whatever it is that you intend to do, then that's good enough but you know maybe there is a better way of doing this so let me see being a bit cheeky on this one okay so let's no say other states okay so i think yeah so when i save this now 
this is it comes up there's a discount on keyless start are you sure you want to go ahead without buying this so i haven't even selected it and it still shows that okay that's awesome yeah that's exactly what we want so the way that you well the way i've done it though uh, i'm not sure if that's how it's meant to be so when you when you select the far right uh, hs1 which is one of the the products this will come automatically so when i went into the product rules i've, I've selected hs1 as the for the alert you know as the code for uh, showing that alert message so the alert message is not based on kg1 it's based on hs1 because it's selected it will fire and it'll then prompt me to select the, the kg1 option do you know what i mean i got it so i would say uh, you are right if your error message doesn't come up for kg1 correct yeah so so if i was to select it now is that what you mean So if I was to continue, right. So this, me... so you just have to make sure that uh, it shouldn't come for that particular product because he has already selected, right? So if again you're showing the alert message, then that that's not the right thing, right? Yeah, 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 of course, of course. So so there'll have to be another product rule which stops from the message firing. I'm guessing when you select it, is that correct? No. No, no. So now in your product rule, you might have selected the products for which this should fire, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what Can I've done is, like, like I said, this is a bit uh, outside the box. So, you know, this has just made me think. Hang on, maybe it can be done this way. Uh, can you show me the so, configuration? Rules? So, so the first, first and foremost, I've, I've got instead of KG one in that, I've got HS one, which is the heated seats, right? Okay. But when I go into configuration rules, that's what I have. Okay. No, but but then how is it coming up for KG one then? So so this is it. This is it. So Actually, when I go into the product uh, code now, yeah. Uh huh. I've actually got HS one right as the filter value. Right. Because you get you get the heated seats as a. a as a mandatory option if you like when you select your car okay the, the, yeah, the it, roof it. No, I get it. so i'm not sure i mean i'm sure that this is not the way how it's meant to be but you know it does the it does the job see i i would say you're almost there Preet. you kind of got the logic right i mean like you not right but you're very close to the right logic Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sajil, can you so, so, tell me okay. how to do this? Tell us how to do that alert rule. Yeah, but then I think, please, if you just try a little more, right? Whatever you have done, this concept, just try to twist it a little, and I think you will be able to get that. You're almost there. Right. Okay. Because I've I've tried the validation rule, right? And uh, but unfortunately, with validation, no, you no, have no. to. Well, say Whatever oh, you have done, fine. Fine. only thing is you have to control from where it is firing. For example, right now, uh, for HS1, it is firing, right? That is fine. Correct. Now you have to alter it, like for uh, for that product. For KG1, yeah. KG1, if it is selected, then it should not fire. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm so... not sure what you have done is hundred percent right. But if you just think a little, right, very close, I'm saying, if you just try to tw twist it a little, I think you, you are right there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But then your concept, right, of what to use is perfectly fine. But uh, can, can you give me any hints on where it is that I've gone wrong? Because although it might take half an hour, I might spend half a day just figuring out what it is that I've done wrong. Any, any hints there at all? Or? So the hint over here is you now what is happening is you have selected uh, the other product, right? HS1. For that, right. you have set the error condition. Yeah, yeah. Correct. So your error your error condition, uh, right now, you this, this is getting satisfied. Yeah. So even, yeah. even when KG1 is selected, even at that time, this is getting satisfied. 
So I'll, I'll need to create another, I'm guessing, uh, some sort of error condition or some sort of rule which stops me from getting that message on KG1, correct? Exactly. But HS1, what I've done so far, that's fine. I don't need to change that. I just need to create another one which stops me from uh, getting that message when KG1 is selected. Correct. Fine, okay, okay. So, so my hint over here is, uh, can you scroll up? Yeah. yeah. In your product rule, your so this is, uh, I mean, I don't want to give you this, but then the, since you would waste more time, your hint over here is the condition met over here is all, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you fine. All, you no. need to keep it uh, like, you know, one or, yeah. or and and process over there. That's your hint. Fine, okay, okay. You get my point right now. All your error conditions are checked, so you don't need yeah. to do that. You need to yeah. twist it over there. That's your point. Condition yeah. met is either it would be first condition and second or third or fourth, something like that. Sure. Okay. You get what I'm trying to say? Uh, I guess I'll have to play around with it. I guess you know, so just to figure out how conditions so, work. So basically, you have to add in some error conditions, but yeah. then uh after adding the error conditions your main twist is in the conditions met part where you have to change it a little sure okay durvish okay. even you got that right yeah yeah, yeah. i got it you can yeah, yeah. suggest or you can help breathe over there yeah yeah okay i understand right now yeah yeah because right now you guys have got the concept right if, yeah. i would say one part of it is there but then i think a little bit more if you guys can just think, you will definitely get it right. You're almost okay. there. Okay. Cool. And uh, then when you go back into uh, the other one, the, the other requirement, uh, and this was for me is complementary car wash, I think. Um, and this is to do with the California and outside of California. And. Uh, I'm going to have to hand out the credit to the race on this one, to be honest, because uh, he's, uh, uh, you know, really helped me uh, design all of this. So in this case, my, my thing was complement to car wash, yeah? So if I was to select California, that gets disabled and I can't add it. Okay. But when I do other states or rest of the world, for example, then that option is added and enabled, which is the complementary car wash. Other states or rest of the world as well. And then it'll help me, it'll let me save this and you know, obviously carry on. Obviously that will still come up. Okay, so uh, one thing over here is uh, like now you are manually selecting that pick list, right? Yes. Instead of that, can we have it automatic? Like based on the dealer sales reps account, we will it will automatically show that. So what you have done is correct. Yeah. Okay. But, but what I you need is. Yeah. Fine, fine. I get it. So basically, if the account is based in California. The option should automatically uh, that pick list on the top should be filled out uh, by itself, right? So I won't have to uh, go through the drop drop down, you know, whatever options. And uh, okay, okay, fine. So we'll have to obviously add a field on the account object. But Sajil, can we edit uh, standard field and standard object for accounts? Yeah, yeah, we can, we can. Okay. Okay. And actually, I would suggest. Uh, so, so how is it happening over here? You guys have a product rule, right, in place? Yeah. Correct. Correct. So we so have two, then, two product rules. Yeah. Right. So what I would say is, we don't. Uh, we, we can remove that pick list from the layout. Mm -hmm. And instead, let let that value come in from the account itself directly. That's what I would do. Okay. 
Sorry, go ahead. No, me and Durvesh, we did speak about that as well, but we we were not, we couldn't figure out. We thought maybe this is the better option. So, but okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this this feature is exactly fine. Only thing, uh, let's avoid that pick list. Let's avoid the work of the sales rep, and let's have it directly populated from based on the, the sales rep's account. Okay. Yeah. So. Sure. Okay, we can do that, right? Yeah, 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 Sajil. Yeah. Okay, so so all this while when you guys were trying it out, uh, what do you think with uh, Salesforce, CPQ, and product tools? Are, are you guys right now aware of uh, the different options that you have using product tools? Because that well, is my is, yeah. See, there's quite a few options, right? And uh, it's, it's, it's all about which one is the is the correct way of doing things, right? You know, so so that that for me that that is where the challenge lies, you know, because I understand how you know the different or basic uh, you know concepts of how the different uh, you know things work, but it's actually trying it out and then working out the best, the most effective and efficient way of uh, uh, you know get into. Uh, you know your project or you know getting to complete the requirement really because there, there might be a couple of ways of doing the same thing but you know you obviously want the shortest and the smartest way so well, for me that is where the challenge is and you know i guess this is where you know practices uh you know is going to come into play really but then i, I totally understand that part but uh, what i'm trying to see is i i know that uh, you know you guys would find it uh, little time consuming to conclude on the best option but are you guys aware of the options that's my concern so so the options when you say the options what, what options are you talking about here uh, like so for example right? yeah so there are different correct the different features that we have that the system allows so i want you guys to know those things like what all uh, the product rules allows you to do and then figuring it out is a different thing that only comes through practice Sure, that's sure, not sure. something you can yeah. just uh, you know your uh, sixth sense would give it it's not that yeah, that would come practice. but yeah, then yeah. at least to know in the back of your mind that these are the options that salesforce cq product rules allows me to do that is something you guys should be clear about yeah the, the only thing i'm going to ask on that uh, subject is uh, i understand the validation and the alerts right you know it's just the filter option and uh, uh, sorry the selection i understand as well what is the filter option again will it will, does it mean that automatically the right products based on the right account are going to filter and you know will start showing in the in the options to be selected is that something uh... exactly so when, when, did you uh, did you use filter yet no we haven't used the filter you see so we've seen we've used are, selection are sure? it's just maybe you want to think a little harder to see if you have used a filter yeah, because I, I, I'm sure you guys have used the filter at one point. Yeah, the default filter, which was the, the service bundle, right? Dynamic bundle. Exactly, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, fine, fine. I get it. Yeah, yeah. No, it comes. It's come back to me. Yeah, I get it now. Right. So what exactly the filter does is it filters out the product based on the uh, conditions that you apply. Sure, 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 sure. Right, so so this is my my concern only is this part that this whole uh, you know box of things that you have you should just know that what are the things available. Figuring it out is something I think you guys are going at a great pace. You guys have figured out so many things so quickly. I'm really glad. But then to know those things is always my focus. So I just wanted to want you guys to ask me if anything else. That you feel is not clear about what product tools can or cannot do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that's always my focus. These things, if you keep practicing or if you just do one or two exercises, you guys will get a, you know, your brain gets trained to figure out what is to be done. So that will come with time. Yeah. 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 At least you should know, right? What are the things that I have in my hand? 
दिस इवेल्युएशन ऑर्डर एंड इवेल्युएशन सॉरी कंडीशन मेट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मीन्स अकॉर्डिंग टू द रिक्वायरमेंट इट विल चेंज राइट एक्सैक्टली एक्सैक्टली so okay so we have to give little focus on that okay exactly so your uh, so right now this last condition that you guys did right with that alert mm-hmm. rule that was uh, you know the only difference over there the only thing needed was to kind of have a customized condition right and uh, the evaluation order how it helps is when you have multiple uh, product rules right you should you know you should be able to control which one needs to fire first you get my point hmm yeah so so if i have can, can if i have a product example there please yeah 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 sure sure so if i have a pro- product rule so if the evaluation order is not set the order in which the product rule fires is not under our control it could fire in any any order so for example if i have a product rule for example uh, you know that suppose an alert rule which comes in before the product is selected okay and then on that same product i have quantity set as minimum of 2 so i have i have a product rule which says uh, that i should have you know at least two pro- two products of that particular kind when i select one particular product that is my one rule and my second rule says that uh, if this is not selected then you give me a error message so this order should be uh, for the order how, what what do you think should be the order for this to fire okay I mean, I'm, I'm guessing the first one should be, let's say, ten, for example. The the second one would be then eleven or twelve. Is that what you mean? Or no? So your first, so in this condition, the first one should be the alert rule first. That do you want to select that product? Or, I mean, are you sure you don't want to select that product? That would be my first condition. The first uh, product rule that should fire. My second one should be after selecting my product. if i select that product i should have minimum two of another kind right so okay fine 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 okay. fine so these things are uh, something that you guys have to uh, make sure it fires in the right way so it's so, a bit uh, like when we some, sometimes see like a diagram uh, where the the options are yes or no and if you select no there's another two options there or if you select yes there's two options there so the the right order is what you mean i'm guessing here right right, right. right. so basically uh, i this is not a mandatory option that you have to you should have an evaluation order but then it is always a best practice to have the evaluation order set up so sure. yeah okay. and uh, regarding that custom condition Uh, do you guys have any doubt like how you can do that custom condition like i'm not saying what condition to put but how to put that condition i mean i'll i'll have to try it out before i can make my mind up on that you know to be honest so maybe maybe tomorrow we can maybe discuss if i'm having massive issues then i'll you know obviously uh bring it up you know if that's all right or... okay sure sure hello yeah yeah anything else guys mm. no so far so far this is fine i mean maybe in the end of the race we'll probably uh you know discuss a couple of things again you know on how uh you know to maybe achieve uh, the requirements uh you know the way that you want us to uh but yeah i mean any questions that we have will you know uh bring it up uh in the next session okay cool so yeah but then always remember whatever we cover in the sessions 
it's not about uh, you know how exactly you can get one requirement right you should try and understand the whole picture of it right? that's yeah. always the focus. okay so let's start with our another topic okay so the, the, this is the advanced search filter wherein we are going to use a plugin to get the requirement done okay going to share my screen You guys can see my screen yeah yes yes so this is your org now so i'll uh, i mean since it's been like couple of days since we had the last session i'll just explain this concept again so basically what search filters does is filters out your products at the product selection page now the your basic search filters that is the search filters which is there through configuration only allows you to do a and condition right you guys hear me right yes yes yeah, yeah. yeah. so it allow so it only allows you to do an and condition so now what we are going to do is there are use cases wherein we need multiple uh, conditions with or also so uh, it could be a combination of and and or or it could be a combination of two or statements so basically uh, since salesforce uh, search filters do not allow you to do that what we have is we have plugin classes you know certain sort of plugins that allow you to achieve the things that the standard search filters do not allow you to uh, perform Okay. Yeah. You guys understand what I'm trying to say? This is only a yeah, plugin yeah, yeah. that allows you to extend the feature that the normal Salesforce search will yeah, yeah. So we what over here there are certain steps. So maybe you guys can write it down to help you guys remember it. So we, what we are going to do is we're going to go to setup, and first I will show you where this plugin needs to be. Uh, added and then we will create our own plugin okay so my what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to setup and search for installed packages hello yeah yeah so you guys can see yeah. my screen yeah 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 okay great mm -hmm. so these are the basic various options we have for the salesforce apk so i have plugins over here do, do you guys see plugins yeah yeah over here do you see this option product search plugin mm -hmm. yeah over here i just have to add the class okay. 
whatever class i am going to write right hmm so over there i just have to uh, put in the class that i am going to create. so now we we'll so we we'll keep this page open now we we'll see the next step uh, next step is to create a class so i have i have created a sample class over here can you guys see my notepad no not yet hmm i don't know what's wrong also I think your screen had had gone freeze. What about now? Yeah, yeah. I can. Okay, so this is a basic structure of a plugin class. Okay, so let me put it this way. Okay, you guys can see the first line, right? Yeah. So the first, so this is more of in you know, a apex coding. I don't want you guys to just uh, worry too much about this, but I'll just show you the part where you can. So the basic idea is to help you guys understand what this class does, so that when you guys get into the consultant role or uh, at the techno function role, you should be able to help them understand what needs to be done. Sure. The the only thing I'm going to ask here quickly, you know, like obviously all of these. Uh, uh, Well, you know, I guess this is a language or uh, probably some part of coding. But is this always the same? You know, or do you have to memorize it, or can you, uh, you know, like is it down to your experience and you know what to do and you write the code accordingly? Yeah. So we we come to that. Right. Come to that. Yeah. So basically, this is an interface. So basically, what happens is this is my class name that I have written. That is code product search plugin two. Okay. okay and then this is the interface that i'm going to implement that is sbqq product search plugin so this whole class is something i'm going to mail you know, get, mail it to you guys you guys will so this is going to be the structure always this is a fixed structure for sure okay always okay brilliant and then the part where you have to worry about is this method the highlighted part is the only part you guys have to be concerned about right okay so this much makes sense yeah so when you say uh, you this is the only part we have to be concerned about what does that mean is this something that we have to design uh, or uh... right so the topic that we are covering right now which is advanced search filters yeah whatever code needs to be written is between this this block from right, here okay. to here yeah where you have to write the code for that okay okay durvesh you do you even you are understanding right yeah 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 so now i'm going to give you an example basically my example says So this this whole class is something I'm going to mail it to you. Okay, through the yeah. app. Now what we do usually is we create this class first, and my first line says that I'm creating an instance. So even this is going to be the standard one. The only thing that is going to change is over here I have a query that picks up all the fields from the code. Okay. So over here, I select the fields. For example, I want I want to select all the products that belongs to a particular category, which is available on my code. 
Am I okay? So, so my requirement says I want to only pick up the, for example, the requirement that we had, that is product uh, type, product type. Right. So over there, let's imagine that I only want uh, to see the product based on the product type on the uh, on the code. Now what I am going to do is I'm so my product type field on code is named as category for example or for example to make it easier let's make this as prod type. So this was my product type wherein we had uh, so just sorry you're breaking up I couldn't hear the last bit there. Sajil. Yeah, yeah. Can you repeat, Sajil? Because you're breaking pretty badly. Hello. No, it's a pretty bad line. Sajil, we can't hear you. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah. Can you repeat, Sajil? Because, yeah. Okay. So basically, what I was saying is, now let's take an example to understand this concept better. So you remember the requirement wherein we had selected the products based on the product type on the code. So we had bought that value from the account to the code and we filtered our products based on that. So this was the first example for the search filter. You guys remember that one? Yes. So we're going to use the same example over here. What I'm trying to uh, portray over here is instead of so over there, what happened is can you give me the examples of product type we use? Like for example, we use CPU and then we used what are the other things that we used? I mean, I've used service plans, uh, for example. Right. So basically when we were using the search filters, what was happening is it in the search filter, it was like, show me the products where products have had to be product type uh, as you CPU and service plan. For example, that was what search filters was giving. you, Right. You guys with me? Yeah, 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 so so far. Yeah. Now what my search filter advance is going to do is as you can see, this is a variable that that creates a query. So what it is trying to do over here is so I'll put this as product type. It is going to fetch me all the products. Right. So over here, what it says is, yeah. So over here, what it says, yeah. Fetch me the product where product type is equal to the quotes new code is nothing but the code that we just query is equal to the new quotes product type. Or so, for example, I have multiple things. So in this, after I put in this query, what happens is it will show me. Uh, you know both the products it will show me CPU as well as the service plan earlier. What was happening is when I had CPU it was only showing me CPU. When my service filter said CPU it, it would only show me CPU. So right now what is happening is it will show me so CPU as well as service plan. You guys understand? Yeah. Sort of. Uh, is it possible for you to give us another example? Uh, you know, like uh, uh, maybe in the real world, you know, something similar that you might have experienced, or something we can use as a, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, reference point. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So basically, let's let's take up another example which says product family okay 
So I'm not worried about the coat over here. So I'm going to remove this one. Now what my uh, filter says is, I have different product families. I have hardware, I have software, I have uh, random product family. So let's consider an example that my product family contains hardware, software, accessories and miscellaneous okay so this is my example so what my requirement is that i should show all the products which is hardware and which is software like on a product it would either be hardware or software right so I should show all the hardware and software products. I should not show. I should not show the accessories, and I should not show the miscellaneous products. These two I should not show. So can you guys suggest me how I can uh, achieve this using the normal search filters? I mean, I'm guessing with the normal search filters will be one or the other, right? It can't be both hardware and software. Is that correct? Uh, right. Would you would you like to elaborate that a little bit? That statement. So so when you go into the search filters, you know. So uh, let's assume you wanted uh, the hardware and the softwares to show up. In that search filter, you can only have one or the other. You can't have both showing at the same time. Uh, and I'm guessing what you're using now is uh, is is going to be an extension of that, which will allow us to. Uh, see hardware and software at the same time exactly so why do you think we're not able to see hardware or you know and software in the normal search filters uh, from memory I guess you can either choose one or the other no uh, not exactly memory but actually the reason is in the normal search filters it was an and condition so basically it was like your search filter would uh, say that you know product family equals hardware okay so this is my first search filter right yeah. and then my second search filter would be show me product family equal to software this is my right. second search filter got it yeah, now yeah. between these two, the clause, the clause is actually an AND clause. So whatever, even if you create a third rule, and if you create a fourth rule, it is all going to be an AND clause. That is the, uh, that is how a normal search filter works. The number of entries. So these are all your records in search filter, right? This is my first record, second record, third record, fourth record, correct? Yeah. So these things. Uh, we are not specifying explicitly whether it should be and or it should be an or condition automatically the search filter takes it as an and condition but when when it takes this uh, takes uh, the, the the condition as an and would should it not show both hardware and software together no you know why because for example I have my product one so my product one for example is product type hardware so it's a single select pick list so I would either have an hardware as a value and product 2 is having value as software okay now my search filter says my product 1 family is hardware so what happens is in, in actual backend what happens is this first product product 1 gets picked over here it comes in and it says it checks if product one family equal to hardware so this condition one gets satisfied and it all then it says and my product family equal to software but my product family is hardware for product one so this this condition is going to fail okay okay you, you understand that please it's a little confusing but i think uh, I can explain that again. So, so even though it says and the condition is going to fail because it is going to go for the best option, the, the the sorry, the first option rather. 
no no so see, let me let me take an example so basically in the back end so this is you guys have to imagine a little what is happening is i have product one i have product two i have product three which is of type yeah. okay so now in the back end what happens is these products so these things gets added into a bucket so let me show you how it is okay and then so my this is for example this is my bucket yeah okay so in my first bucket what happens is the first product comes in then my then my second product comes in yeah and my so this is completely back end this is things that we don't see but i'm uh, explaining you so that you guys understand it better sure, sure now what happens is i have these conditions so what what happens is so let's let's forget everything over here okay let's so this is where we are focusing or from here so now in my bucket this is my bucket one and now what happens is one product gets picked so my this particular product this gets picked right now i'm focusing on this one the star one okay yeah my product one so if you have seen the field that i'm referring to is product family so sure. my product family is a pick list so at a time i can only have one value on it yeah so yeah so my value on product one is hardware got it yeah 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 okay so now these are my search filter conditions which is normal search filters now what happens is my product one when the search filter fires it picks up the first product from the bucket it takes it up and it runs it through all these conditions so it will check if my product family value on product one is hardware so this condition is satisfied yeah yeah then it checks the second condition which says and so along with hardware and my product family software so this is right. this is where it is oh wait so the product is not software it's that hardware means, right it's hardware so it gets failed so it will reject my first record right okay so basically what my advance now what my advance search filter will do is since i did not have an option to put this and so we we are not explicitly putting this and anywhere this is what how the back end system is designed right, right okay fine 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 so in the back end when salesforce had created this search filters concept they had themselves put the query as and so we don't have control over it but then later on what happened is as soon as the business requirement came in and you know so many other uh conditions they figured out that oh we need an or condition we need to customize this based on the requirement that comes in so that is where the search filter plugin was in introduced a search filter plugin is only used to extend the services that a normal search filter allows right okay so your normal search filter you'll never use this right you'll never use the product family hardware one and software one because you know it's going to fail exactly right okay so so when a requirement where when a requirement like this comes in where i know it is going to fail through a normal search filter i will switch it to a plugin understood so now what my plugin does is so now that you understood this part what my plugin will do is it is putting in explicitly an or condition if you see the highlighted part yeah 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 so my same condition in search filter normal search filter would have been and without an option to select this but my advanced search filter is allowing me to edit this and put this as an or yeah so if i yeah. if i pick up this concept over here it means this will be an or and this will be an or 
So based on yeah. what I select, it is allowing me to select it as an select it as an odd. So, so what if you for a family, uh, uh, I think uh, satisfies one of the uh, one of the filters, hardware, software, or miscellaneous is gonna uh, is gonna pass. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So earlier when I explained you what my condition said was, it should only allow me hardware or software. So now what I'm going to do is I'll only have two conditions that says hardware or software. So my product one will come in. It will check okay product family is equal to hardware or the product family is equal to software. So one of them is correct. It is hardware. So this will get selected. Yeah, understood. Now what it will do is it will select the second product and it will check if what is the uh, product family and it will it will see that oh the product family is software. So so really we can have we can have the three all three of them are showing right in the filters we can see hardware software and miscellaneous so any product families that belong to these uh, uh, three uh, uh, you know uh, what do you call it uh, three types then should show on your search you know on uh, on your results basically. No no so your miscellaneous will come in because now in your bucket when the third product gets selected my product family for miscellaneous is miscellaneous so it will come over here it will check if product family is equal to miscellaneous no this is this gets filled or it is equal to software no even that gets filled so this product gets rejected and only see in your product selection page only these two products i see but we can add that condition right we can say the third condition would be product family is equal to miscellaneous and that'll be number three right right and we can uh, there's no uh, you know cap on that so you know there's no limit on that so you can carry on adding the different sort like families in this case but different product types exactly exactly fine okay so in, in just uh, you know maybe you guys can just think of this and let me know if you if there's any gaps or anything that you don't understand no, no, I understand. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Durbesh? Oh, yeah, trying to understand. Yeah, but yeah, getting something uh, in my head. So when I will do on my own, it will get. So let let's see. Okay, I mean, do you want me to explain it again? I don't mind explaining no, 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 it. No, 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 Saj, no. Just, just uh, when I work. When I work alone, I, I will search about it. When I see your video again, then it will come to me. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And another thing that I wanted to uh, bring to your notice is, for example, uh, now, if, if a particular condition goes into the search filter, so this is a very important point. You guys have to remember this always. I get a requirement. So my earlier requirement says that all products that are active should be shown. Okay. So so I'm giving you three requirements. Let's, let's uh, have three new requirements. So I'm taking this off. Okay. You guys understand this, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to take this off. And my requirement one says, my first requirement says that program products which are active, these are the products that I should see in my uh, product selection. Then my second one is products uh, What what can we put? What can we product is active and uh, let me think what condition let's quickly check one of the products and see the fields available.
Okay, so I'm I'm gonna select. So I'm also going to select this field which is taxable. So which are and the products which are taxable. And my requirement C three says that. products that belongs to family hardware or software this is my requirement now that we know search filters and we know advanced search filters can you guys tell me how we are going to approach this requirement So for I think that there's going to be four conditions right uh, in the filters. So the first one is obviously the active products, the second one taxable, third one for hardware, and the fourth one for software. Right. So how are you going to implement this in search filters and advanced search filters? Right, you can't do this in the normal search filters, I'm guessing, because there's an option either hardware or software, right? Right, that's correct. Uh, you know, you can maybe get the first two in there, active and taxable. Uh, but because there's an or option in the third one, you need the, the plugin. That's what my guess is anyway. Uh, that's, that's absolutely the right uh, option, Preeth. That's the right option. So uh, these two things. So how are you going to implement this? Can you just verbally tell me what would be your plan? So the first one, uh, I would go to the normal search filters because this this is an an option. Uh, you know, if they're taxable and they're active, then you know, obviously the search filters should uh, check first thing. You know, are they active? Second thing, are they taxable? And if both of them sort of like. Uh, 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 you know, obviously uh, apply, then uh, uh, it should pass. Uh, now, I'm guessing the requirement is and, not an or, because if it's an or, then that changes things completely, because it could be an active product, but if it's not taxable, it's not going to show up. Uh, in which case, we'll just have to, you know, uh, maybe uh, dump the, uh, the normal filters and move on to the plugin from the beginning. No, no, so this... Uh, these things are an and so requirement one to make it easier this is how it will look yeah so in which case you know like you'll probably go to the normal search filters so you'll do the active and taxable on that one but for the third one you'll go into plugin and you'll do what you just showed us uh you know for the product family uh you know does it say hardware uh or does it say software you know either one of those conditions if they're met then they should show up uh I'm not sure how we're going to be able to bring them together because I've not looked at that, you know, and how uh, uh, how it's going to come across when you actually work on it, you know. So, but in theory, that's what I would I would be thinking. Okay. What about <clears throat> about the third? I think it will belong to the advanced search filter. Uh, for one and two, same as Preet, I can we can do it from normal search filter. Uh, for the third one, Sajil, uh, I'm not getting that condition or conditions. Okay. Just because we we can only use that or condition, or we have to use any other because. It's, I don't getting in that. Uh, no, so regarding this example or overall you have this doubt? No, no, no. Uh, for this example, for hardware okay. and software. Okay. So basically what, what would happen is these two. Okay. These two are my normal search filters. Mm. Wherein I will create two records for this and this is achieved automatically i just have to create one record here a second record goes here 
and that's it now for my third requirement what i would do is i don't have to worry about this because this the system handles it as an and automatically what i need to worry about is this part that is product belongs to family hardware or software so this is exactly where that example that i showed you before comes into the picture mm -hmm. that advanced so in my advanced code what i will do is product family equals hardware or my product family equals okay software okay, okay. Mm -hmm. and that's it mm -hmm. this so now what i have done is this i have put it into the advanced yeah search plugin quick quick question here uh, so if you're going to use the advanced search plugin why why not use that for all of these uh, uh, requirements why do you have to you know go for the normal search filters and then you know do one separately on the advanced because i'm guessing the advanced would cover the first two as well would it not exactly so the, that's a very good question so basically what Salesforce best practice uh, suggests is to always choose for configuration if it is not possible for configuration is only when you will go for coding right okay fine so now if your first two things so this is not only for search plugin for each and every requirement whether it be cpq whether after afterwards when you guys get into salesforce development as well it is even you know the quality check that happens on salesforce projects this is the first parameter that they do is to check if each and every code that is written was it not possible through a configuration right so when, whenever you guys get into projects there would be this quality quality teams and uh, so many other people who get you know, come in and they review your project okay can you guys please go on mute i think there's a lot of disturbance coming thank you yeah so whenever you get into a project there are these uh, people uh, that you know th those who do the quality check those who review your uh, development those who review your configuration so one of the first important points that they bring up and which is a very important thing very crucial thing is whether a requirement was done through a configuration or through a customization so whatever we do through coding wherever we we start writing a code is always a customization and whatever we do through point and click that is these things that we configure is something that is the first preference always the best practice says that i should always try and achieve a requirement through a configuration first if salesforce does not allow you or the requirement is such that it cannot be achieved through configuration that is the only point of time when i will go for a customization so this is not specific to search filters whether it be product rules whether it whether it be anything whether it be, you know you go into salesforce development sessions or you become a salesforce developer or you become a consultant or you become a ba whenever you suggest the solution or you suggest the approach on how this requirement needs to be done your first approach should always be configured okay understood yeah what about you durvesh yeah yeah understood. okay so if you remember when we started off so this is this is a very basic example uh, over here you can just do anything and everything in this piece if you you have a decent developer he will be able to achieve there is no requirement that cannot be achieved through this each and everything can be achieved from this piece of block over here whatever you write between this block will satisfy a search filter requirement this is 100% possible there is no requirement that cannot go out of this scope okay so now what we did is now the thing is we will usually create a class so i'll explain you just so that you guys are aware of this i will go to setup so you do you guys don't have to worry how this works or you know what is the coding side of it that is not not uh, something you have to be worried about but you have to be you should know the the knowledge side of this 
so that when you are at a consultant level you should be able to at least suggest this to the developer and then they will figure it out how the code has to be written or what the logic would be but you should be able to suggest this to the developer Uh, so just quick update uh, when we go to the setup and uh, then uh, install package then cpq configuration and where we have to go for this apex I'll, class? I'll show you. I, have to, I have to do that again so, uh, so now you know how to create an apex class right okay uh, so what i did is i went to setup and i just click uh, search for classes over here yeah 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 and then i am going to do my first step this is my first step is to create a class so i create a class here this has given me an error there's some variable missing okay so i'm returning a, a thing so i need to make this as a i need to declare this first now this error would be gone and i get to save this this is my class name that is code product search plugin i copy this now comes the important part i have my plugin class ready i copy this now over here in the search i will select install packages i go to configure i go to plugins and this is my product search plugin over here i just have to paste this and i save it that's it Okay, okay. Yeah, Durvesh? Yeah. That's as simple as that. So you guys have to remember this. This step, the last step after creating the class, how where this needs to be configured. It's something that you guys have to remember. And that's it. There's nothing else that you have to worry about that. What is the line of code that needs to be written or anything? For your job role your only thing is you have to just give a suggestion that you can achieve this through this functionality and this is how you can configure it that's it and then it is the de developer's job to figure out what or how the code has to be written in over there okay any questions guys Well, maybe once I've uh, worked on it, maybe I'll have a few. So, uh, we'll yeah, so, what I, yeah, so what I want you guys to do is I will send this code to you. I will mail this to you. You don't, know, you don't have to worry how it works. That's not something you guys have to worry right now. But only just try, just try saving this code and uh, setting up the plugin like this part of it. Just do this much. And then I think... Uh, and another thing is just try to analyze and come up with requirements that you feel is not achieved because I'm challenging that there is no requirement that cannot be achieved without a search filter. Like everything is possible through search filter, you know, when it comes to filtering out the products. But if you guys feel that some and or, or some kind of a tricky filter, think of it, what is it? And we'll discuss on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now uh, I, I just want to give a roadmap of you know what we are going to do next in the upcoming session. Basically, the next thing is product rules. Sorry, uh, price rules. But then before that, I want you guys to finish that assignment. You guys will finish the product rule assignment. And uh finish assignment and the project and keep the project up to date so what my product project will include is project will include is assignment one that is product setup and bundling 
then my assignment two which is search filters then my assignment three is product rules okay so these three things is something that i want you guys to be uh, you know updated with and then after that i'll we will start with price rules we will see how summary variables work we'll see how discount schedules work and we will just see a basic code template so these are the four topics that we need to cover okay so sachil the code template is all about uh, the after we selection uh, when we select a uh, <clears throat> products and the addition uh, means what we can uh, custom that quote that is right now after right, your... so, so if you remember my first session i had actually shown the whole process like from account i go to opportunity quote i generate a document when i generate a document that is my quote template that document hmm. is something that you can set it up so in okay. the so in our uh, you know this this session we won't be going into detail but i will show you what are the different options through which they design it so that later on after uh, you know after some time when you have a good hands on and then you guys uh, you know get get a good hands on then you guys can try it out because it's a uh, it's it's like you know you create a web, you create a web page right so so in web page you just need to know what you know html uh, what are the tags and in uh, what are the different tags of css but then you cannot teach someone on how to create a specific page it can be you know wild imagination everybody has a different imagination of how you can design it the same way the core template also acts the same way it is just a combination of uh, different tools and then you design it your way however the client wants it to be so what i am going to do is i am going to tell you what are those tools and uh, we we can try and create a very basic template if you need but then that's all that we're going to cover but these things we're going to cover in detail for example price rules summary variables and discount schedules and how many sessions are we going to need for each one of these right so this would need a two hour session this is one hour this is one hour and this would be a combination of this and q and a that's it so this is one hour sajil uh, i think i have uh, also heard one uh, term called macros macros in salesforce so what is that it comes in this uh, syllabus no no it's not in the syllabus okay so what actually basically do you know macros macros are uh, so so what exactly was the scenario for that uh, means where where exactly did you come across macros uh, i have uh, come across one of my uh, technical head actually uh, he has gone through some of his project Uh, in, in which he have uh, tell he have told me that uh, if you are doing uh, since for cpu to go for micros also learn that also i, I don't know what he said no 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 basically basically what uh, salesforce macros does is it helps mm -hmm. you to uh, set up things that needs repetition so okay. basically uh, you know for example you know sending out an email or all these things right uh so you can schedule it or you can uh you know set it up in a way that it happens automatically you know after a particular uh, period you can set up a period and then it happen automatically so that is what macros does so th it is not in anything related to cpq it's what it offers and you can set it up so usually it is being used for emails or reminders or such thing okay okay yeah 
okay any any other thing so this is uh, how our schedule would look like so for tomorrow i would like to keep the session at 4 pm if you guys are uh, okay with it not possible sajil not possible no 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 so i can for pm your time right yeah 4 pm ist uh i usually come to home at uh, 7:30 to 8 pm okay uh okay so we need to we need to figure that out then uh, or or what if i keep it a little late for example around uh, 9:30 will that work? no problem yeah yeah, yeah i'm cool with that yeah yeah okay so so what i will do is i'll talk to navya let, let me plan it out and then the reason i uh, i wanted it to keep at 4 or 5 is so that you know uh, we can have this long session two hour session and it would it would not be too late for uh, bringing a fuss that's what i was thinking but then uh, okay. let's see. i'll talk to navya and then so is the possible session. if possible can uh, can we take at 7 pm tomorrow 7 pm is where yes. i already have a meeting at that time from 7 to 8 yeah so that's why i thought so from 4 to uh, 6 6:30 was what i was planning okay but then okay. yeah so then for the possible for you right yeah okay so let's see i'll i'll talk to navi i'll plan it out and then you guys uh, she'll inform you guys okay okay so yeah else, we can start off with uh, discount schedules and summary variables and then you know later we can go for pencils we we will we'll shuffle it together and let's see yeah in math order we uh, learn order this in or sorry uh, does it matter what order we'll learn order this in no 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 it doesn't matter okay cool yeah yeah okay, okay. so anything anything else you guys want to talk about but then guys uh, i i really want this project to be updated by tomorrow yeah. whatever right. assignment we have till now make sure that uh, that project project is up to date because then uh, you know we are almost uh, done with the first half of the session like uh, of this uh, session the first half is done now we're going to move to the second half where we will deal with the prizes so i don't want you guys to be stuck still stuck at the older part when it comes to the project you don't mind if you guys come up with doubts i'm totally happy to help you but then let's not have an incomplete project when we are moving to the next session sure okay okay guys if that's it then we can we got to close anything you guys want to discuss then we can take it up bam nah, cool what about you durvesh no nothing if any so doubt I comes na sajil i will ask you don't worry ha huh? sorry uh, no so if any doubt answer, comes I will, i will mail it to you and then you guys can send it yeah. up yes yeah, please <sighs> okay guys thanks a lot uh, and okay. sajil just one more uh, thing uh, when we get some data from our excel or anything and we are uh, putting that integrating that excel data in salesforce cpq or any cpq but if the data value is missing in the uh, or it is hide in the what we can say excel uh -huh. so salesforce uh, salesforce cpq uh, does find it or we have to find with another third uh, third party applications No, no. So uh, you you mean to say when you are loading the data, right, into the system? Yeah, yeah. Through a data loader from Excel. Yeah, data import wizard. Yeah, any exactly, anything. Exactly. Exactly. So at that yeah. time, uh, Salesforce does not explicitly do something. Whatever is there on that Excel, it will just pick it up. You do a mapping, right? Uh, the yeah. column on the column on the Excel, you map it to the field on Salesforce. So whatever but, value but, it finds. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just go on. Yeah, so whatever value it finds in that mapped column, it will directly pick it up. There is no logic over there. Yeah, but Sajil, if the if the Excel file I have 
is having uh, 33 tabs and uh-huh. if it is a, a cost sheet data or financial data or any data which is very big Correct. very big excel file right so Correct. and the data is missing so it will take from the data loader that such a huge file we uh, have to map it in data the... is missing by that what do you mean is it blank yeah it's not blank but uh, it we have to find some data in that and uh, by i don't know but we have to find some data or we uh, or salesforce uh, can give some dummy data or can put some dummy data on that no no you have to put, so so if there are some blank fields which you want value in it mm-hmm. you have to put it manually in the excel and then load it salesforce okay. won't uh, add anything okay so when it comes to data loading salesforce is pretty dumb i would say it will just okay. pick it things directly whatever you put okay. in it will pick it up that's it yeah but it can uh, pick it up the Uh, means a uh, lot uh, bigger size excel file right for bigger size excel file you have to use data loader the data import wizard won't help you yeah okay 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 yeah so this data loader also comes in our syllabus na or just give us a glimpse of that what is that uh data loader it would be a part of admin but then i can just show it to you how it how it yeah, looks yeah. like okay it's, it's okay. something it's an application that you can download directly If okay. you just Google uh, data loader for Windows or uh, you know Mac, whatever you're using, you can just directly download it. That's it, and then you just have to upload a file based on the object. It's a very uh, basic tool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, guys? Preet, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. So far, yeah. So everything's good. Yeah. So just work on these uh, requirements, and if there's any questions, we'll you know touch base tomorrow at some point. Sure. 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 But I, but I really, I think that you guys would be able to get that alert thing. You guys are very close. You're getting the idea of it. You're getting the concept of it. Now it is like a uh, little bit of brainstorming thing that is needed. <laughs> to be frank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, sure. You know, at least we're on the right path. You know, so just uh, make a few tweaks and we'll see how right. we get on. Sure, sure. Okay, guys. Then. Cool. Thank you. Yeah? Thanks, Ajit. Sure. Bye bye. Bye bye.